We'll turn now to Professor Hardin. Well, I think I'll complain of unfair labor practices first. Uh, how can you put me after that eloquent statement? <laughs> <laughs> but curiously, I'm going to tell a story that in a sense is the same story, but it has the opposite conclusion. I think this may be uh, important. I, another story, again, I haven't told it before. Uh, when I was, this is 14 years old, high school, I had a friend walked home halfway every day. We lived about a mile and a half from the high school, and at a mile we had to divide. He go, went to the left, I went to the right. But of course, before we divided, we stood around, and, you know, the way teenagers will do, and talked and talked and talked. We had to solve all the world's problems before we separated. And uh, we got most of them solved. Um, and the occasion that I remember, I was on to religion for some reason or other. I got interested in comparative religions. And I, I was interested in Zoroastrianism. And if you ask why, it was because of that lovely sound of the word beginning with Z. And when I discovered that it could be called Zarathustra instead of Zora, I thought, oh, how ugly Zarathustra, really. So I, I studied Zoroaster. Now, we separated. We'd been talking about religion. And then I was walking by myself uh, down a railroad track, as a matter of fact. And all of a sudden, I said out loud, there is no God. And the incredible feeling that I had that I'd never had before, I suddenly was walking on air. Most incredible, I couldn't have weighed more than five pounds. And uh, for the next week or so, I don't know how long, I was still walking on air, gradually less and less, and finally I forgot about it. And I didn't see the significance of it until uh, about 20 years later when I read William James' The Varieties of Religious Experience, and he has many accounts there of a person seeing God, seeing the true way uh, to the religious life, and he goes through an experience of that sort, and I realize, well, that's exactly the same thing, because in both cases, one, the person sees God, the other person sees there is no God, but his difficulties are resolved in that moment, and from then on, he's a true believer or a true unbeliever. I became a true unbeliever. Thank you very much, Professor Harvey.